Hello, interwebs. It's Sunday, October 8th, 2017. Big 12 recap. First game I'm going to talk about, Texas Tech at Kansas. As I expected, a blowout, but my prediction was 31-10. That was basically the halftime score, 35-10. Tech won 65-19 on the road. Um, just big blowout win for Tech. That's all. I, I mean, you expect Tech to win that game, and they did. So, I mean, not really much to talk about there other than Tech's offense just dominated Kansas. So, yeah. Next one was uh, West Virginia TCU. More interesting game. Kenny Hill had uh, three different types of touchdowns, passing, rushing, and receiving on a trick play. Uh, he snapped it, gave it to the running back, running back threw it back to him, and he ran for a touchdown. So, yeah, um, I watched the fourth quarter and the end of the third quarter. It was a pretty good game, actually, just because um, like there were certain times the defense would step up, and then they, like West Virginia's defense gave up a couple big plays, and they would get, like, they had one chance to get an interception, but the guy was out of bounds when he caught the interception. And then TCU ended up scoring on that drive, which was a go-ahead drive. So, yeah, but then TCU, they put some trick play, that trick play in there where they reversed it back to Kenny Hill, and he ran, what, 40-something yards, 48 yards. So, yeah, but TCU looked better overall. Just better defense and then better offense. So yeah, they look really good, and they are undefeated. They are one of the two teams that are undefeated in conference. The other one is Texas. So it's the Big Twelve is wide open right now, honestly, for who can win it. But TCU is definitely a heavy favorite, them being number eight in the country, undefeated overall, undefeated in conference, beating teams like West Virginia, Oklahoma State. So they are definitely a favorite for the Big Twelve right now, and they look very good at this point. Next up. Uh, Texas beat Kansas State in double overtime. Yeah, that was a very, very intense game. Uh, the defense decided to go back to the Maryland ways again. So, yeah. Um, gave up some big pass plays. Got an 82-yard touchdown. Kansas State did. Uh, the secondary just was backing off a little bit. Or not backing up, but they were coming up because uh, they kept on running the football. Kansas State had, like, I don't know, a lot of rushing yards. And at one point, Kansas State put their backup quarterback in. They ran the same play every single time with him. And he ran it like 15 yards three straight times. And I was just like, you ran the same play every time. I don't know how you don't stop it. But yeah, K-State had 140 rushing yards, which is, it seemed like a lot more, but apparently it wasn't. Uh, their backup quarterback had 12 carries for 79 yards, which is the most they had. And then... Texas has an offense now. Uh, Sam Ellinger got the start. He played pretty well. 380 passing yards, uh, 107 rushing yards off 20 carries. He looked like Tyrone Swoops at times, trucking people. I miss Swoops. He, he was the GOAT. Anyways, um, he had some really good carries. He made he escaped a lot of sacks. Uh, like There were times he had like just everything was collapsing around him. He'd just sneak out, run outside, gain a few yards. And then there was, that was pretty much it. Uh, first over, uh, the, the kicking issue, the kicking issue. How could I forget this? Kicker for Texas. He kicked one field goal. He made it. He kicked another field goal. He made it. He missed a 27-yard field goal. He shanked it so bad. They were on the right hash, and he missed it wide left. It was ugly. That would have tied the game. And then later, he tied the game. I already mentioned the second made field goal. And then, he, um... K-State had a chance to take the lead at the end of regulation. Jesse Ertz threw it deep. It was intercepted by Deshaun Elliott, uh, his fifth interception of the season. And then Texas drove down the field, set up a 45-yard field goal, and he overcorrected his mistake of wide left, and it went just a little bit too far right. So overtime, first overtime, Texas scores on the first possession or the first play of their possession in overtime. Uh, Ellinger threw a nice pass to Gerard Hurd, who was wide open. Then, K-State, they went down, they scored. Backup quarterback got a touchdown run, I believe. And then, um, 
K-State got the ball first in the second overtime. They had two holding penalties, which killed them and set up for – and then forced them to kick – Texas defense held them. So it was fourth and 21, and it forced them to kick a 53-yard field goal. And their kicker earlier in the game made a 54-yard field goal. So, you know, Texas was obviously like, this guy can kick. He's really a good kicker. And he kicked it, and it hit the goal post, and it bounced back on the field. So, yeah, it was no good. So Texas just had to score, and they won. So they drove down the field just a few plays, and then Chris Warren handed it off to him. He had a couple guys on his back, and then the line was just like, oh, look, he's still up and they're not blowing the whistle. So they pushed him into the end zone. And that was the end of the game. Texas won that 40-34 to in double overtime. Shout out to Western Michigan. Good job winning in seven overtimes. Seven. Seven overtimes. Final score was 71-68. to It's like a basketball game or something. Then the last game <laughs> I'm going to talk about the like most shocking game of the year. Iowa State, with their backup quarterback, beats Oklahoma in Norman. You heard me right. They beat Oklahoma in Norman. Like The Iowa State Cyclones, the team that's historically not been that great, but as I said in my Big 12 preview, I think they are an improving program. But they won. They were down 24-10 at one point. Uh, I watched the I watched the first quarter. I watched the most of the second quarter. It was about 17 to 10 when I left. But I was looking at updates to my phone, so it was 24-10. I was like, okay, Oklahoma is gonna go in halftime with a two touchdown lead. Then I see like they got 57 yard gain. Iowa State they kick a field goal. I was like, oh, Iowa State's still in it. Okay, you know they still have a chance maybe to keep it close, scare Oklahoma, make a field goal later. I was like, okay, they're only down by eight. Touchdown, two-point conversion. They get the ball back. They get, like, a 28-yard touchdown. And I was like, oh, they can tie it with the two-point conversion. They get the two-point conversion. I mean, and then they took the lead. And I was like, Iowa State can pull this off. And then um, and then they won with a go-ahead touchdown with 219 left. So, Iowa State... Exposed Oklahoma's defense. Oklahoma looked a little overrated. I thought, you know, their offense did fine. They still scored 31, which is pretty good. But their defense needs to improve if they want to win the Big 12. So, um, I'm, I was about to say something. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the defense. They allowed 38 points to Iowa State. Um, yeah, that's just not acceptable uh, for Oklahoma. You're number three in the country, and you just allowed 38 points to a backup quarterback on a team that might not make a bowl. And you're at home. So Oklahoma's probably never going to wear all red jerseys or uniforms again, the red helmets on red jerseys on red pants. Um, but, yeah, I, that, <laughs> I still can't believe Iowa State won that. I mean, congratulations to Iowa State. But... I'm I'm a little nervous to play a uh, a mad Oklahoma team, but then again you look at it like when they played Baylor they won 49 41 on the road. I was like okay they were on the road. I mean it's probably just a fluke. I mean they just had a bad day maybe, but then they went out and did this against Iowa State and I'm really questioning how good they are. I mean their offense is fine, but their defense. That's a little concerning if you're an Oklahoma fan, your defense. So, yeah, um, just to next week's games, we got Kansas at Iowa State. You got Texas Tech at West Virginia, TCU at Kansas State. I would put that on an upset alert uh, just because it's in Manhattan. That's a tough game. I will preview that next week. Uh, Baylor at Oklahoma State. And then the big game next week is Texas and Oklahoma. They played the Cotton Bowl. If you didn't know that. So that is the big game next week. That is at 2.30. Uh, first time it's been played at 2.30 since 2010. Uh, it is the first time since 1947 that two first-year head coaches are playing each other for Texas and Oklahoma, which I thought was interesting. So, yeah, that's that. Maybe a sports news video later today. It's way behind, so I might just delete some of the stuff that's old that you might have heard of already. And then, yeah. So, that's all I got for the day. Adios.